All right, this is the history of XZ, but before we jump into this, we need to get a couple things explained. For those of you in the back, you didn't study for the pop quiz. Here are a couple of terms that you got to know. An algorithm is just a step-by-step, -step, usually math-type process. Compression is a computing technique that squashes files down to save space using math. A software development kit is a group of tools used to create a piece of software. Now, let's talk XZ. You may have heard of it prior to one of the highest profile Linux issues since it was and still is used in quite a few places, including Debian, Fedora, and of course, the Linux kernel itself. If you had heard of it, you may have also heard of its predecessor, LZMA. These are both file formats, but more importantly, LZMA is also the compression algorithm that underpins both. Hold on tight with me while we get the timeline right. Back in the late 1990s, Igor Pavlov came up with a new novel compression algorithm, LZMA. That is the Lempel Ziv Markov Chain Algorithm. It leans on the work of Andrei Markov, a Russian mathematician from the early 1900s whose work can be found threaded through statistics in almost all walks of life. And Abraham Lempel and Jacob Ziv, whose work on LZ77 and LZ78, two compression algorithms published in 1977 and 78 respectively, inspired all sorts of newer compression techniques like GIF in 1987, ZIP in 1989, and PING in 1996, and yes, LZMA around the same time. Still with me? Great. Now that LZMA was very much a thing, a way for people to actually squash files down in size without having to be overly technical, arrived on January 2nd, 1999 in the form of the first 7-zip beta, version 2.00, running on Windows. Its first official release would be July 18th in the same year. Over the next few years, both LZMA and 7-zip would see plenty of improvement, but adoption would be slower. But one big milestone in mid-2005 would see adoption fostered. LZMA, which was sequestered away within 7-zip itself, was finally decoupled and made available as the LZMA SDK, or Software Development Kit, and licensed under the GNU LGPL and IBM's CPL. Enter Colin Lassa and a core team of developers working on a new Linux distribution based on Slackware named Slackles around the same time as the LZMA SDK release. Confusion with the newer liked name distributions won't really be an issue since the Slackles name was quickly replaced with Tukani, the Finnish word for Tukan, to create the Tukani Linux project. Its goal was to be a slim Linux distribution that could fit on one CD-ROM, that's less than 700 megabytes, and create tooling to benefit all users of Linux, but most especially Slackware, and most interestingly, to a package management system for Slackware named Package Tools, or PKG Tools. Now, if you weren't aware, Package management systems like Debian's dpackage and Red Hat's RPM use compression to squash files for easy transport, and the Tukani Linux project's PKG tools was no different. For compression, it used, you guessed it, LZMA in the form of the GCC-compiled LZMA SDK. Further still, the awfully complex command line utilities that were innate to LZMA were refined and simplified by the project, starting with LZMA.sh, later called LZMash. This effort eventually translated into what we know as LZMA utils or utilities. However, in 2006, Colin would take a break from both Tukani and 
LZMA utils as a result of recurring health issues. Unfortunately, in mid-2007, the Tucani Linux project was officially gone, but LZMA utils and the new LZMA file format would live on. And a couple months later, LZMA utils was released to everyone as an alpha, and a forum was set up to facilitate development. A little over a year's worth of development, stalling, and improvements, LZMA Utils was left behind in favor of the similarly LZMA-backed XZ Utils. XZ still bases itself on the LZMA SDK. Aside from the command you run, which is XZ, the thing that does the real heavy lifting is called libLZMA. Now, remembering that library's name, will come in handy later. And on January 14th, 2009, version 1.0.0 of the XZ file format specification was announced. The XZ utils package branched off the old LZMA versioning of 4 and began with 4.999.7 as a beta that would soon roll over to version 5 at the end of 2010. It did so with almost universal support for Windows, Mac, and Unix-like operating systems, including the BSDs and Linuxes, and even DOS. Adoption was increasing, and even Arch was no holdout, since the file size reduction XZ achieved was too much to ignore. They began using XZ for their own packages in the same year. Over the following years, the XZ utilities were incrementally updated, but the file format lay dormant and mostly quietly. Fedora, Slackware, and Debian would also follow in Arch's footsteps and use XZ to compress software packages too. As the years went on, some distributions would eventually migrate to using Z standard compression, including Arch in 2019, Fedora and Ubuntu would make the switch in 2020, and in some cases, higher compression could be achieved, but most importantly, decompression times were vastly improved. It's important to note that Colin worked on XZ and his other projects as time allowed, but between life and health, there were lengths of time where seemingly nothing was done. But taking these breaks as he did will have always been the right choice. It was around this time of XZ to Z standard compression switching in Linux distribution packaging, right about 2021, that a new name appeared on GitHub, Gia T75, otherwise known as Gia Tan. While his first patches weren't to XZ but to LibArchive, in hindsight, they were fishy. The change in this case was to use an unsafe variant of fprint. This was a tool that simply outputs things with lots of available options. More patches over the following months continued from GIA to other projects, but none to XZ until mid-April of 2022. Colin wasn't merging it. A new face, though, Jigar Kumar, shows up to apply a little pressure to get this patch accepted on GIA's behalf. Over one month, and no closer to being merged. Not a surprise. But over the following weeks, and with pressure from other transient users like Dennis Enns, Giatan was noted to have been supplying Colin with patches outside of the usual methods. Colin said, I haven't lost interest, but my ability to care has been fairly limited, mostly due to long-term mental health issues, but also due to some other things. Recently, I've worked off list a bit with Giatan on XZ Utils, and perhaps he will have a bigger role in the future. We'll see. It's also good to keep in mind that this is an unpaid hobby project. Anyway, I assure you that I know far too well about the problem that not much progress has been made. The thought of finding new maintainers has existed for a long time, too, as the current situation is obviously bad and sad for the project. After about eight months of prodding and patching behind the scenes on January 7th, 2023, Giatan was finally able to merge their own commits to XZ on GitHub. All that's left now is to put the forthcoming pieces into place. In March, 
Contact information for Colin is replaced with Gia's on Google's OSS Fuzz utility so that any bugs, errors, or security concerns that might come of throwing random stuff at XZ would be routed to Gia, not Colin. In June, an update to LibLZMA that was supplied by another transient user, Hans Jansen, was accepted by Gia Tan on Colin's behalf, laying more foundation for what was to come. All that was left was to convince the OSS Fuzz team to accept a patch that disabled indirect function, which would, according to Gia, cause issues with testing. Gia also made a stop at the LLVM repository, a compiler and debugger to note that the issues that might show up during compilation of XZ could safely be ignored. Finally, in February of 2024, Gia directed the OSS Fuzz project to his own domain at XZ dot tukani dot org rather than the original tukani dot org slash xz giving gia even more control to push out the final step later in the month which would be adding the test files which weren't test files at all these would eventually be included in 5.6.0 and 5.6.1 of xz utils the plan was set and only the final push for inclusion in projects was left for Gia to do. Throughout March, Gia and other transient accounts st starting on March 25th would spread out and request the newly minted but tainted XZ tarballs be included in Debian, Fedora, and Ubuntu, as well as Go libraries associated with 1Password. Projects like Debian and Fedora did indeed accept those commits, into Sid and Rawhide respectively, but on March 29th, Andres Freund took to OpenWall, a software and security site, and Mastodon to explain what he found the day before when looking into some benchmarks he was working on when he noticed slowdowns in SSH, or Secure Shell, a remote control protocol used by Linux boxes everywhere. I accidentally found a security issue while benchmarking Postgres changes. If you run Debian testing, unstable, or some other more bleeding edge distribution, I strongly recommend upgrading ASAP. I was doing some micro benchmarking at the time, saw SSHD processes were using a surprising amount of CPU, got suspicious, recalled that I had seen an odd Falgrind complaint in automated testing of Postgres a few weeks earlier, after package updates really required a lot of coincidences. As far as normal users are concerned, the end result of this situation was that a SSH key for systems running XZ, SSH, and SystemD was extracted and placed and allowed anybody with the private key to log in. Over the next 24 hours, Fedora and Debian shut things down and reverted the changes, saving almost everyone from one of the biggest bamboozles in the history of Linux and open source software. On April 2nd, Colin adds a page to his tukani.org domain to acknowledge the incident and keep a running log of what had gone down. So catch these! and other great topics as they unfold on our Lemmy subreddit or our news channel on Discord. That's linuxuserspace.show slash Lemmy, Reddit, Discord, Mastodon, Telegram, Matrix, Twitch, Twitter, all the things. And as uh, one astute user found out, if you just put gibberish in there, you still get something. You do. So there's, there's, there's nothing Dan hasn't figured out for us. I mean, you're going to go someplace. One thing that you can do at the landing page that you end up on is add our RSS to Audio Bookshelf uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> or, or whatever <laughs> podcast catcher you have. Yep. But more than that, join the discussion. Yeah. Help us decide the direction that the show is going to go. If you like the history stuff, suggest more history stuff. I didn't expect to go down the XC route and then all of a sudden all of the Ooh. Linuxes were about to explode. And it just sounded kind of cool. And who thought I was going to end up at 1906 talking about Markov chains? Not me. Nobody. Yeah, nobody. <laughs> nope, not even us. So, but, you know, 
we do a feedback show. Maybe you've noticed at like every other one. And so send us some stuff and we'll talk about it. Like we, that's right. We totally talk about most of those sometimes not right away, but we, we, we get it in there. And sometimes we have an entire show based only on your feedback. That and those actually are happened. Our, <laughs> those are some of our favorites, really. Yeah. Yeah. So our forum on Lemmy, there's a specific community that you can mm-hmm. go and just post your thoughts or whatever you're thinking or whatever you think about the show or whatever you want to talk about. I mean, tech related, that's it's just a nice place to put weird nerd things. Same with a subreddit. But if you're more into conversation that happens in real time, the Discord, the Mastodon, yeah. the the Telegram, and the Matrix, those are good places to do that. Absolutely. And that live stream that we keep talking about, that we, was really, really good. That's, that's some pretty real time feedback too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's over on Twitch and it gets posted to YouTube, but uh, yeah, of course, there's, uh, it's a good the time. Twitter does exist. <laughs> it, it's a good hangout time, yeah. 